Another key part of analyzing the biomechanics of movement is to assess when muscles are active. And we do that using electromyographic recordings. We've seen how to record motions, and we'll look at how to record forces. And together, motions, forces, and EMG activity really give us a complete picture of what's happening during a motion. Now, there are two main types of electrodes that we can use to record muscle activity. Intramuscular electrodes, that's within the muscle, we insert a wire, say I'm gonna measure EMG in the biceps, I take a, a needle, insert that into the muscle, remove the needle, that leaves the wire, there's usually a little hooked end, and that gives us an electrode placed within the muscle that gives us nice specific recordings of that particular muscle. That has the big disadvantage is that you have to put a needle into the muscle. So typically in experiments we use surface EMG electrodes. So here's an older surface EMG electrode that I'm showing here. It's wired and we would put these on muscles and we would route the wires up to a little fanny pack and that would allow us to record the motions or the, uh, the muscle activities. Now we have these very nice wireless EMG electrodes and that's what we'll be demonstrating today. You'll see that when we put these electrodes on muscles, we palpate the muscle because you can feel when a muscle contracts. And in the very olden days, we used to use that to record the activity of muscles. So if I wanted to know when Hannah's tibialis anterior was on, I might put my hand on here and try to palpate when the muscle's on, when she's walking, I can feel it. Okay, it's on, off, on, and I could go along with her to try to record her activity. You can see how that would be not very accurate and somewhat disruptive. So these new wireless EMG electrodes are a lot better. So let's go through just a, a quick experiment of how we get set up. Perfect. So we're just gonna put four electrodes on today. Typically we might do something like eight or nine on a single leg, but the first one that we'll do is the tibialis anterior on the front of her shank here. Um, and before we even put the electrodes on, we want to make sure and prepare the skin. So we would shave and we would wipe it off with alcohol to make sure that any lotion or greases or anything are gone to get the best signal quality from the muscle. So we'll put on the tibialis anterior electrode here. And as we place these, like Scott said, we'd palpate the muscle. We'd also know the origin and insertion points, so we know generally where the muscle's running. So we'd find the tibialis anterior here. And we want to put the electrode parallel to the muscle fiber so that we're measuring the voltage differential along the, the muscle fiber. We put it here on her tibialis anterior. What's important to note is there's, um, if we were to record Hannah doing some activity, and we know her tibialis anterior activity, and even in the same day we take the electrode off and try to put it back on, even in the same place, we get slightly different values even if she's doing the exact same muscle activation. So um, these these placements aren't, aren't exactly perfect. So in order to understand how active her tibialis anterior is, we do um, a normalization procedure um, where we have her generate some max activation. So we might have her do something, um, which we'll see in a minute, where we're trying to get her to isolate a particular muscle, or we'd have her do some functional activity, like a maximum height jump or a sprint, where we think that she's maximally activating the muscle. Then we take the voltage from that maximum activation and say that's the max voltage that this muscle, this electrode placement on this muscle could generate, and we would divide all subsequent voltages by that. So we would have a zero to one muscle activation um, coming out during activities like walking or something else. So there's her tibialis anterior. Hannah, go ahead and turn around for us. We'll do um, her gastroc medialis. So the gastroc medialis is in the posterior part of the calf here. Um, the Achilles tendon is coming down here. You can see the, the gastroc here. It has two heads, a lateral head and a medial head. I'm going to put this on the, the medial gastrocnemius here. And it's kind of amazing. I can put this electrode on a muscle. Muscles excited by electrical signals. They're very small signals. So this electrode can detect those. And then there's a preamp that amplifies that signal, and then it's transmitted wirelessly to a control system. So it's kind of amazing to think your nervous system is exciting the muscle. We can detect that level, very small level, microvolt level activity in muscle, and then 
amplify that and transmit it and see when the muscles are active and how strongly they're active. Great. So the next one we'll do is the vastus medialis, which is the uh, medial side of her quadriceps. So for this, we'd have her extend her leg and flex her quads. And you can see the uh, muscle belly of the vastus medialis here, and it's kind of penetrated into the, um, into the patella. So we put it at a slight angle. Great. And go ahead and turn around. We'll do one of her hamstrings muscles, the biceps femoris long head. And for this, we'd have Hannah flex her knee. So go ahead and flex. Thank you. And we'll push down on the back of her, her ankle and she'll resist, which will um, activate her hamstrings. So resist. Great. And then we'd find her hamstrings, tendons attaching into her tibia, work our way up and find the muscle belly. And the biceps femoris is on the lateral side. So we might put it here. And the fibers are, are fairly um, longitudinal like this. So once we do this, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about analysis later, but once we're comfortable with all of our electrode placements, and we'll test that out, we want to make sure and wrap these electrodes with um, some sort of tape so they don't fall off during the movements, because if we get the sensor coming in and out of contact with the skin, we'll get poor measurements of voltage. Let's talk about how we normalize these signals. Remember when we modeled muscle, we need an estimate of the activation, a number between zero and one. Well, zero would be when the muscle is off, one would be when the muscle is maximally excited, and we want to know the relationship between our signal that we're recording here and whether it's on or off or where it is between. And we do that by uh, estimating a maximum voluntary contraction. So Hannah, if you want to sit down, Scott, you resist. Yep. So we are going to have Hannah do a maximum contraction of her, her quadriceps. You don't need to be fully extended. Scott, you're going to resist. You're just going to extend your knee. I will encourage you so that we get a maximum. Are you ready? I'm ready. Contract. Go. Go. Pull. Pull. OK, good. Relax. So we got a maximum contraction. We'll use that as the, the one, the maximum contraction. It's interesting, though. We might have Hannah jump, and she, we would get a stronger signal during that jump than we would during that maximum contraction. So frequently we'll do a set of activities to try to elicit a maximum muscle contraction. So that's the first part of our EMG. We'll go analyze those signals in just a minute. So we've placed the electrodes on Hannah's muscles and now we want to check and make sure that we have some decent signal. And we'll also talk about what it looks like, what these raw signals look like and how we might process them um, to get those zero to one activations. So first we'll just have Hannah do some activities that will activate various muscles. So we'll start with a calf raise to activate her gastrocnemius. You'll see that her gastrocnemius is activating here. We'll have her tap her toe to activate the tibialis anterior. We'll see that lighting up here. And then go ahead and do a squat for the vastus medialis. See the quadriceps? Go ahead and flex your leg. I'll push down for the hamstrings. And you'll see the hamstrings activating there. So we have pretty good signal coming from the EMG. But as you saw, go ahead and do another squat. These signals are, are very noisy. And so what we do to turn those into a zero to one activation is we'll um, band pass filter them. We will uh, make them all positive values and then we'll take a low pass filter over them and we'll end up getting a waveform that's somewhere around six hertz. And that'll be called the, the linear envelope of the EMG. So now we're ready to capture EMG in our experiment. <laughs> 